After releasing the fairly serious and poignant western tale of John Marston and Red Dead Redemption, Rockstar Games did something it had been wanting to do for some time, make a zombie game. But instead of creating a new intellectual property, the developers decided to revisit its most recent one, allowing us to see what the Old West in 1911 might look like if it was overrun by zombies. Okay, so there was nothing in my research that indicated any sort of zombie outbreak happening in the early 20th century. But that doesn't mean Rockstar didn't do any research. There are plenty of references to real mythology from different civilizations in the game. So, to celebrate the game's 10th anniversary, let's take a look at the real history of Undead Nightmare. Found throughout the world in Undead Nightmare are the Four Horses of the Apocalypse. If this name sounds familiar to you outside of the game, you might have heard it in politics or football, in novels or film or music, but there they're usually called the Four Horse Men of the Apocalypse. They actually date back to the Book of Revelation, the final book of the New Testament. In the text, the seven seals of God are said to secure the book or scroll seen in an apocalyptic vision. The opening of the seals marks the second coming of the Christ and the beginning of the Apocalypse. And the first four seals are the four horsemen. First was the white horse, which later interpretations named conquest for its rider's obsession with conquering. Even later interpretations named it pestilence, associated with the spread of infectious disease and plague. The second seal revealed the red horse, often known as war, whose rider wishes to spill blood. The third is the black horse, known as famine, as its rider carries a pair of scales to weigh the bread, as was done during a famine. And the final horseman rides a pale horse and is known as death with Hades, or Hell, behind him. In Under Nightmare, the four horses take the same names, Pestilence, War, Famine, and Death, but outside of this, their color, and to an extent their appearances, they don't seem to borrow any other elements from the original four horsemen. For example, while in the Book of Revelations, the rider of the white horse held a bow and was bent on conquest, in the game, Pestilence only stuns the undead creatures nearby. While the rider of the red horse takes away peace and forces men to slay each other, War leaves a trail of fire and lights enemies on impact. The black horse brings famine, but famine's main trait is that it is fast. The pale horse might be the most similar. In Revelations, the horse brings death, in some interpretations killing a quarter of the world's population, while in the game, death causes the undead heads to explode. Okay, so maybe not that similar. There was potential here for Rockstar to more closely imitate the original text with the four horses, like giving the player a bow when riding pestilence, or forcing the undead to turn on each other when riding war. But the horses are pretty fun to ride as they are, so it's hard to complain. All of these horses can be found in the wild, but the last one, Death, is also gifted to John by a woman at the end of the game. She says that her name is Iotiotl, and she leads John to the catacombs where he returns the mask and cures the undead plague. If this woman is to be believed, then she is an Aztec goddess, being, or force. She is said to be a manifestation of Chalchiclique, the Aztec deity of water, seas, rivers, and storms. More specifically though, Iotiotl both was and controlled mist, vapors, and crepuscular rays. Crepuscular rays are the beams of sunlight visible during twilight hours when the sun is positioned below the horizon. This is of course most commonly seen during sunrise or sunset. Interestingly, at the beginning of Undead Nightmare, Jack discusses a story that could be seen as a reference to this. It's all about, in ancient times, how Aztec warriors worshipped the sun, but during full moons, some of them worshipped the moon instead, and upset the equilibrium of things. Perhaps this upset of the equilibrium is related to Iotiotl, who is said to both be and control the rays that exist during the transition between light and dark, sun and moon. Perhaps Iotiotl maintains this equilibrium, and when Abraham Reyes stole the mask from the catacombs, it upset the equilibrium and caused the spread of the undead. Speaking of Reyes, Iotiotl is sometimes also referred to as the goddess of fame and vanity. To Aztecs, fame and public magnificence was represented by a mist that would cloud and distort its surroundings. So perhaps when Reyes stole the mask for his own fame and vanity, it spread a mist carrying the virus that caused the undead. And speaking of the mask, it appears to closely resemble that of the Olmecs, an ancient civilization that predates the Aztecs. But this is not necessarily an inaccuracy. Masks were often inherited and passed through generations in Aztec culture, and at least two Olmec masks were found at Templo Maya, the temple that was used by the Aztecs. So it's not impossible that the Aztecs also inherited the mask in the catacombs as well. As for the catacombs themselves, its existence as an Aztec site may be geographically inaccurate, 
The game's Mexican state of Nuevo Pariso appears to be based on some real Mexican states, such as modern day Sonora, Chihuahua, and Coahuila. However, the Aztec Empire never took land that far north, and they're going as far as San Luis Potosi in north central Mexico. Sometime after John returns the mask and returns home, he is killed, as depicted in the original game. However, he was buried with a flask of holy water, so when Seth inevitably steals the mask and restarts the zombie outbreak, John is reanimated as a revenant instead of a regular zombie. This is mostly accurate to the traditional depiction of a revenant. Revenants are creatures who take the form of a reanimated corpse. John's appearance is fairly accurate to a traditional revenant, decomposed, rotting flesh, like he came directly from the grave, but his actual transformation into a revenant is a little less so. Whereas John being buried with holy water is what caused him to become a revenant, in actual mythology holy water was thought to purify the body and allow it to rest, essentially killing the revenant, not causing it. The mission of a revenant is typically to carry out unfinished business, often for malevolent revenge missions like haunting their living relatives, killing people against whom they hold a grudge, or spreading pestilence or disease. John's unfinished business, however, is not malevolent. It exists in the form of stranger missions, missing people, and outfits. Basically, it's a clever way for Rockstar to justify further gameplay beyond the main story while still keeping the world completely zombified. Several other creatures can be found around the world of Undead Nightmare 2. The Sasquatch, more frequently known in mythology as Bigfoot, is a mythical creature thought by some to carry off people to be killed, or to steal the fish from nearby fishermen, or to kill the sheep of local farmers and eat one in a single meal. In the game, however, despite being feared by the local population, they're actually calm creatures who eat mushrooms and berries, having lived in the forest for over a thousand years. You eat babies. You have to to survive. Everyone knows that. Ain't your fault. We eat berries and mushrooms, you fool. There are a few other minor creatures that appear too, such as the Chupacabra, a fairly recent folklore legend first reported in Puerto Rico in 1995 and said to drink the blood of livestock. And the unicorn, a type of horned horse that does very little besides leave a path of rainbow, but is still pretty fun to ride. Of course, there was potential here for Rockstar to include more mythological stories or creatures like a minotaur or a werewolf, a centaur or a flying horse, or even vampires or ghosts. But the fact that there is so much new content in the game, which was presumably only in development for a few months after the release of the main game, is still very impressive. And the fact that so much of this content is based on real history and mythology makes it even more so. 